So in general, gluten sensitivity is real. Many people who are gluten sensitive don't ever get picked up as celiac. Imagine like the big Venn diagram, right? In the middle, the cure is gluten sensitivity. It's the, it's the big circle. And then you have the overlap with celiac is the smaller circle in the middle that gets basically um, gets overlap with, okay? And so you have gluten sensitivity. Most people, I would say, have it 70 to 80% of the population are gonna have some level of inflammation, whether it's energy, mood. Remember, most gluten sensitive situ uh, symptoms are not even intestinal. So when I say, hey, you have gluten issues, they're thinking bloating, they're thinking gas, diarrhea, digestion, constipation. Guess what? It may just be brain fog and fatigue and mood issues and sleep issues, right? So you have to open yourself up to symptoms that are extra intestinal, right? Outside of the intestinal tract. So that's the big one out of the gates there. And so big thing is gluten sensitivity. That's the big umbrella. The small umbrella is the celiac. Celiac requires a lot of damage, a lot of inflammation, specific in the intestinal tract, a lot of that microvilli wearing, a lot of neurological or antibody specific to damaging that intestinal tract. And so you may not have that, but you could have other issues. You could even have other issues, right? I have Hashimoto's. Many people have Hashimoto's, that's an autoimmune thyroid issue. Other people have other types of neurological issues going on where they're making antibodies to attack certain tissue. And that can be significantly impacted by the gluten leaky gut connection. And so, yes, gluten sensitivity, big umbrella. You got to look at different ways you can test for it diet wise, empirically with, with your food, looking at blood tests, looking at stool tests. These are great ways to look at it. And the big five mechanisms of how gluten can impact you. We talked about just food allergenicity. We talked about pesticide residue, glyphosate, Roundup. We talked about intolerance, not being able to break the foods down. Talked about leaky guts. These are all important things to look at. And then just nutrient deficiencies. The more you inflame the gut, the more you're going to impact your body's ability to absorb nutrients. All right, guys, hope that makes sense. Regarding gluten symptoms to go away, there's some data that says if you're like celiac and you're looking at like an immune response, it could take up to six months for antibodies to come down in some cases. Again, the healthier you are, it could just be a day or two. If you have significant autoimmune already, you have known celiac, you have known, let's say MS, it could take quite a while for those antibodies to come down. So you really want to be careful. I tell patients, if you're pretty healthy, no known autoimmune conditions, and you feel good, you know, there's always that 80-20 rule and try to maybe just do things that are grain-free, do siete chips, do cassava, do yuca. If you feel really good overall, you could always sub in some white rice here and there. I don't think it's a huge deal for most people. Some people like myself, I may do white rice like once a month, right? And I'll do extra enzymes, maybe some extra charcoal as well to kind of bind things up. So you got to look at where you're at, how healthy you are. The more healthier you are, the more you should be able to adapt. If you have known autoimmune genetic predisposition, then you got to be a little bit more careful with that. Use more enzymes, try to find grain-free substitutions like potato, like cassava or yuca. These are better options than just doing um, corn and such.